week ago. This man took it upon himself to organize the best way he could as many people as he could possibly attract to this presentation. It was through our, literally our best friends in the whole world, Betty and Mario, Betty's standing at the door here, she's our bouncer. That, that it all became possible. And the reason this room is not filled is because you folks are the only ones that don't know about mind control. All your neighbors and everyone else does. And when they read the papers and they see where young people are blowing themselves up, they, the, what, what, you, what you can imagine is, <clears throat> what would possess someone to lose their ability to, for self-preservation? And I ask people all the time in airports, restaurants, whenever the opportunity prevails, wonder what it is that these people are thinking about when they blow themselves up. My goodness, I'm really surprised at the answer. Because in 1990, when, when I presented this information to members of Congress that I personally knew, and in, again in 1995, when we presented our case to Congress before Congress, after being stopped in the open court when the judge declared that our case could not be further adjudicated because he was invoking the 1947 U.S. National Security Act, in which, by the way, each and every one of you is subject to it because Canada has a peace treaty with the United States. In any country that has a peace treaty with the United States, there is in that peace treaty our 1947 National Security Act. And so if the CIA decides to come in and abuse you and torture you out of your mind like they did at the Allen Memorial Institute by the founder of the American Psychiatric Association, a Dr. Ewan Cameron, there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. The cases were finally settled against the CIA a couple of years ago after practically every one of the litigants had died. The litigants received $50,000 for their minds and their lives, and that money wouldn't even begin to pay for the class action lawsuit. For those of you who wonder where mind control came from, it's, it's an ancient form of, of mental manipulation. Traumatic mind control or trauma-based mind control is as old as mankind's existence. They have found drawings in caves that are thousands of years old that depict the exact formula for torturing someone out of their mind and taking complete control of them for the rest of their lives. In the Egyptian Book of the Dead, there's an accurate and 100% complete formula for the control of another person's mind. Of course, it's trauma-based. Heinrich Himmler was assigned by Adolf Hitler to research the families that were multi-generational, for all intents and purposes, Satanists, who had incestually abused their children, exposed those children to blood rituals, and those children had developed some extraordinary abilities. They had, well, we all have photographic cards. Um, I don't have enough film. But had I been tortured, I would have. They had photographic memories. 
they could they had eye hand coordination where they could point and shoot. So you can see how the implications for becoming a perfect soldier there. And of course, photographic memory would be an excellent spy. The the surprising things that were happening that Heinrich Himmler had discovered. Welcome, folks. Was that there seemed to be an opportunity to research mind control and dedicate the scientist that Hitler had at his disposal, the mind scientist. And not, he was not really concerned with producing an atom bomb because Adolf Hitler believed, and rightly so, that if he could control the minds of his appointed politicians for his new world order, by the way, Caesar was the first one to use that term, new world order, then Adolf Hitler, then George Bush Sr., and every president that followed. So, those of you like Vern and myself, I'm sure many of you in the audience have used that term, New World Order. In the early 90s, people looked at you like you were some sort of conspirators. Then George Bush Sr. announces it on international television, and no longer were we considered conspirators. Or, I don't think I ever see an apology. I know Kathy did anybody. And believe me, um, we have many people tell us that's nonsense. But my control was going to be the super weapon of the future in Hitler's belief. So after the war, Second World War, the United States 1947 persuaded Harry Truman, which I still believe was one of the best presidents the United States ever had, persuaded Harry Truman that if we, meaning the U.S., didn't import these Nazi and fascist scientists who were supposedly rocket scientists, to the U.S., then the Soviet Union would get them. So they got um, an act passed by Congress, and they promised Congress there would be no SS members, only Nazis. That was the first lie. Oh, and by the way, that same year, in 1947, the CIA was born. Ironically enough, the 1947 National Security Act. And every peace treaty with every country that the United States had was rewritten so that every person in those countries would be subject to the U.S. National Security Act. So the U.S. could do anything they wanted to to any member or any, any citizen of any country. And there was no 